He's ready. He's it. Hello, everyone. How is everybody doing today? Do you still remember me? My name is Jeffrey Wong, a nutritionist and a host from Now and Cecil. So good to see you again. So in this beautiful Thursday, what are you guys doing? Uh, what about the holiday yesterday? Everybody? Yeah, you had a great holiday yesterday? Hmm. Where did you hmm, go for holiday? So right here today, okay, I or I saw a lot of people, uh, they have been waiting this life for, for a long time. Yeah, because we saw the event candidates, the participants are uh, quite a lot. So right here, everybody, I believe you are so excited and looking forward for this live sessions for a long time as today's topic is so helpful for your children. As, 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 as an adult, okay, I often uh, see some skin conditions happen to the kids. So by the way, everybody, today's topic is going to be uh, it's going to be how to treat skin problems in children. So right here, okay, as a kid, uh, last time uh, when I was young, uh, for myself, I encountered some problem like eczema and also uh, even, even my, my siblings, they encountered some skin problems. Actually, we didn't know why it's that. Uh, until now, we are still a little confused about what, what, what was that? What was the, it, it was an allergy or it was a skin rash? Okay, we are quite confused about it. So right here, everybody, okay, do you have any skin conditions or skin problems uh, happens to your kids? Please put a comment below here. And I need your help on in one thing. So everybody, I want you to click the like button, okay, in this light and share it out. Why do I ask you to do so? Because, okay, we are helping the community and the society to be better. So share the life out to some of the girls, okay, no matter you are um, helping a friend or you are sharing the knowledge to your families, this one single press can help them to be better, make the society to be better. So everybody, please share the life out together. And right here, another thing I want you to do is like our Dell and Cecil page. If you like it, you will get a benefit. Why do I say so? Because every week, almost like every week or every two weeks, we will have a live section like this. Okay, we will be sharing about health topic and also some educational uh, things to your kids and you. So right here, everybody, are you excited about this? If yes, place a lot of love and like on this, okay? In this life, place a lot of love, everybody. Okay, right here. So everybody, this is Jeffy here. Okay, I will no longer talk about um, introducing about the topics. Let us welcome our special guest today, Dr. Shoburn. Okay, let's see. Hello, Dr. Hello. How are Hi. you today? I'm good. Hi, how are you? Very good evening to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a great day. And today we okay. are having uh, this beautiful yeah, night uh, with our audience together one more time. So last, yeah, last time we talked about HPV, right? Today we're yes, going to exactly. learn something from you. Mm. So okay. we're going to learn how to treat skin problems in children. So Dr. Shoban, can I know some something uh, from you? I heard a lot uh, of skin rash happen to children and also like eczema is quite a common one happen to mm, many kids. So right here, can I know uh, what are the common type of skin problems happen in children? Yeah, do you mind to share this for our audience? Mm. Okay, a very good evening to everybody who has tuned in today. Uh, I know it's quite late, but I just hope you can just bear with us. And I really hope that whatever we put in today will be very fruitful and also can enlighten a bit uh, about some uh, common skin diseases which you can normally see for uh, children. But if you look at it, uh, for children, for skin diseases, which is actually a very, very big, very huge kind of like, uh, I mean, the diagnosis are so many, too many different causes, causative agents, how they present, and it's very, very variant. 
So it's quite difficult to actually just zero in to a few of them and we can just mention that in this uh, session. But what mm -hmm. I would like to do is that I would just like to put forward the most commonest uh, uh, presentations or uh, uh, skin common skin diseases which we normally see in primary care and also normally where we see in the common clinics actually throughout Malaysia and not even Malaysia, wherever we see. So basically, if you look at children, I would like to just mention these five main things which we normally see in our practice. So uh, mainly the first thing which you normally uh, see is actually eczema. I think a lot of people have mm -hmm. heard about eczema. Okay. Then the other few which I would normally like to which I like to touch upon is also uh, for about diaper rash, heat rash, urticaria, and contact uh, irritant. I mean contact dermatitis. So these are the main mm. five topics I would like to touch upon today and just discuss briefly about how they present and how we can actually treat them and how are we supposed to uh, go about uh, on daily life uh, living with these conditions and so on. Okay. Mm. So as of now, right, the first main topic I would like to present is actually on eczema. Eczema is actually a very, very wide topic. It is also known as atopic dermatitis. Uh, eczema is actually very closely linked to asthma. So a lot of patients who have Ooh. asthma also do have eczema as well. So this is how actually is interconnected. Mm. But for okay, that part okay. of asthma, I won't be touching on that. I will just touch purely on eczema itself. Okay. So what is mm. eczema? Eczema is actually the most uh, common skin condition uh, affecting babies and children. Uh, it usually begins normally uh, for infancy. It's normally about three uh, months and above. And mm. during the childhood, right, about 80 to 90 mm. percent of children, babies having uh, eczema, they normally start within the age of six years. And uh, a lot of them, when they have when they have initial part of eczema, they will actually about 70 percent of them they do continue until adulthood. What is eczema? Okay. Eczema is actually a very itchy condition and is usually chronic and relapsing, meaning that they can actually keep repeating, even though you try to treat it, you'll keep repeating on it repeatedly actually, and it's very, very itchy. It mm. can actually normally improve with age and uh, even clear completely. However, eczema, eczema right, for your information, can, uh, I mean, reactivate back after a long period of uh when it's quiet without any symptoms and signs they can just flare up after a few years as well so mm -hmm. how do we know actually our kids actually have eczema how do they present the first thing how they normally present is that it appears as red scaly scratched rashes it'll be very very red actually the skin and sometimes you mm -hmm. can see blisters as well and in long-standing or chronic disease, right, the skin can become very thickened. You know, something like hypertrophy, the skin will be very, very mm. thick and coarse. And it may mm. present slightly depending on the children's age. Can you show me the slide, then, the first uh, slide picture? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, so uh, back in Amit, we need to help on that. The first picture. Okay, is okay. this the one? Show the door, show yeah. Then? This is one of the uh, uh, way where they can actually present. This is actually acute atopic uh, eczema in infants. Normally, when you see this kind of condition flaring up on the face, uh, you can see that hmm. it's very scaly, hmm. it's very red, it's very erythematous. And it's quite hmm. scary. You know, when you have baby coming up with this kind of lesion, you'll get actually very, very scared. But this is yeah, how normally yeah. they will present. Okay, the next slide. So the next slide. Okay. okay this wow. is another one actually. Uh, acute on the left side is actually atopic uh, eczema over the, uh, what do you call this? The flexure uh, areas. That means at the, you call it a cubital fossa at the elbow and also behind the knees. This is where typically mm. eczema actually uh, occurs. But not only there, it can occur in every, any part of the body actually, but this is how they will normally present. Very red, very scaly and very, very erythematous. So mm. what we do about this, see, commonly it affects uh, many, many places, uh, even the scalp, face, cheeks, like the one I showed you earlier. Mm. And um, as I mentioned earlier, also it also affects the limbs and hands. Okay. 
Mm. And uh, the other areas which can also be affected is our neck, our elbows uh, here, also our wrists mm. and ankles as well. So it actually goes many mm. many places. But this how the redness and very erythematous. And then sometimes in very bad conditions, it's not only localized. You know, it can actually affect the whole body. It'll be very red and very oh. very. Yeah, you know, that's very bad condition already. So I these see. kind of things, like admissions. Uh, IV antibiotics because of the uh, secondary infections and so on. So, what do you do to confirm the diagnosis? Okay, basically, if you see these lesions, please bring the child to see a doctor. Okay, because most of the time, uh, eczema right is actually a clinical diagnosis. You don't do blood mm. tests or you don't do any kind of screen scraping to diagnose that. When a doctor sees the kind of skin lesions and the the area where it's localized. Wherever is, I mean, flaring up. Normally, more most doctors can actually come to a conclusive diagnosis, stating that this patient has eczema. But okay, okay. So I think it's quite clear on that, right? Okay. Yeah, quite clear. Mm. Here is that a lot of people, a lot of parents, especially when we mention about uh, eczema, the first question they will ask is that, doctor, is this eczema contagious? If I touch, am I going mm. to get it? Okay. Yeah, so I'm actually, curious about this too. Yes, they are very really afraid of that. Do I need to actually uh, isolate another child of mine so that this child won't get the same disease? It's completely untrue. Okay, it doesn't. Oh, uh, it does not okay. spread. So it doesn't it's not mean con- that contagious. Okay. No, it's not at all. It's actually the skin mm. condition itself which makes the condition that way. It doesn't mean that if you touch the other person with eczema. You are also going to get it, so it's never mm, that way. Yes. So we yes, have to really so everybody, be clear on that because it's very pitiful mm, for the child, you know. Oh, I see. Yes, the yes. Like, don't go be, be beside yeah, it. Feel uh, guilty, uh, right? Yes. Mm. And sometimes the other parents might see, oh, this child is having eczema. Please don't, please avoid this child. Is we get sick because of the child. Yeah. So that that kind of con- mm. misconception actually. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay? Yes. But yeah. the problem is with the uh, eczema, the tendency is that your patients normally tend to scratch a lot. They really, really uh, scratch a lot until it can cause uh, secondary infections. Um, mm. And but the thing is that we, uh, eczema is not really related to any kind of uh, poor hygiene or poor parenting or anything like that. It's only thing mm. is that eczema gets worse when parents get worried and then they start to use so many different types of medication, uh, traditional mm. herbs. They try to rub over the skin. And they try different kinds okay. of uh, methods where they try to rub it using a lot of cloths and so on, and that eventually makes it worse. I so see. the key mm. factor for eczema is that please get the diagnosis right. See a doctor. When the doctor gets the diagnosis, that's where you actually can treat it. What I call this in a better manner. Bear in mind mm. to treat eczema is not easy. It's very tough. The problem is that it can keep recurring repeatedly. Even though we feel okay, it's getting better now. After about a couple of uh, weeks, couple of months, sometimes it recurs back again. So it's quite tedious and it's quite I tiring see. sometimes. Yes, even for parents and the patient themselves. So I see. Hmm. What do you normally do? Say okay, you already went to the doctor. Okay, you saw a doctor said hmm. okay, my child, your child has eczema. Okay, what what hmm. can hmm. you do on your part? Okay, first thing hmm. what you can do is then make sure. The child does not have uh, too much of excessive heat or uh, sweating. That means you don't expose the child to too much of heat and not to sweat, sweat too much. If not, that can actually irritate the skin a lot. What you're trying to do is that you're trying mm. to stop any skin irritation. Okay. Mm. Secondly, keep the skin moisturized all the time. So okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whatever products you get, a simple aqueous cream or simple moisturizer over the pharmacy, you just get that. If you see the eczema, okay. please keep it moisturized. The more dry the skin is, the more eczema will flare I up. I see. So, Dr. Okay. Shopin, do they have to, hmm, do they have to apply those moisturizer for eczema's one or any random moisturizers will do? Actually, uh, even in the market, right, there are very simple moisturizers which you buy over the pharmacy, uh, just like aqueous mm. creams. They're, those are very basic uh, moisturizers. Uh, no need to go for the higher ends like uh, Ceradan or Ceravis kind of a thing. Even the simple aqueous cream will do the trick. The whole I idea see. is to just to keep it moisturized. You do not want the okay. skin to be dry and mm-hmm. it, uh, after that cracking up and so on. Okay, okay. got it. Mm. Yeah. 
and then uh, another thing is that for to stop dryness right make sure the child does not stay in air conditioned uh, place too long because in air con mm. air conditioned rooms and so on right the air becomes very dry so that mm. itself it accentuate the the problem of eczema a lot okay mm. another thing is that please never use uh, never do for the child bubble baths you know you try to put in the i mean a bathtub and then make bubbles and then make the child they want to play and so on try to avoid mm. that because prolonged mm. exposure to soap or any kind of like strong i mean strong soaps and so on right will actually make the eczema worse okay? i see okay mm. so another thing is that you must try must always try to advise the child try not to scratch the sites where it's itchy i know that is tough but that's mm. how you have to educate please jangan uh, try not to scratch jangan garu or you must tell the mm. patient mm. accordingly i mean uh, tell them because it can cause infections and so on okay okay and then mm. um sometimes what you can do is that uh because of the itching and so on when you scratch it too much you can actually inoculate bacterial infection into the skin mm. and this can mm. cause like uh what you call this secondary infections and can make it make the eczema worse i see okay, okay. this how it actually uh makes the eczema i mean worse when you don't really take care lah. okay i see so, so this is mm, mm. So how, now the next thing question is how do I actually treat eczema? Mm, so mm. when you go to a doctor, what the doctor normally advises? Normally, mm, there are main three main things the doctor will normally give whenever the child has already been uh, diagnosed with eczema. Okay, the first mm. thing I already mentioned earlier that's actually a moisturizer. Okay, mm. the doctor will actually prescribe a good moisturizer uh, in the market. You have many out there. Which are very very good. Um, what will do? What you need to do is that you apply what whichever the area which is eczematous, which is very itchy. At least you try to. If if you can do it twice a day, it's good. But if you can go more than that, maybe about three to four times a day, that's even better. But mm. in a way, if you can just do it twice a day, it's fair enough. It's it's good. Okay. So you moisturize mm. the skin as much as you can. Okay. I see. Okay. So you just apply. You don't, you don't control the moisturizer. Okay, the, the skin is on, on my back. You just apply it a lot. So no harm done. You, can, you don't think like, mm -hmm. oh, it's going to make my, my clothes dirty and so on. No. You just apply it just to protect the skin. Okay? Yes, yes. So, mm -hmm. so what you do, uh, so you basically the first thing is always moisturize the skin. Mm, skin. Mm. So uh, is it clear on that part? Yes, uh, Dr. Shoban, uh, uh, uh So another audience, right, he has a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, Ku Yusuf Ismail is, ask, is asking, uh, what mm -hmm. about use of steroid creams? Do you guys use that for treatment okay. or eczema? Mm. Okay, this will go to my second part, okay? Meaning that, as I mentioned earlier, the doctor will give, do three things. First, he will give the moisturizer. The second part, the doctor will give steroids because mm -hmm. steroids are important during the acute phase of eczema. It is mm. very, very important to make sure that the flare-up, the redness, the inflammation comes down during the acute phase. If you don't use steroids, right, it will actually make it worse. So during the acute phase, yes, we will oh, be okay. using the uh, But not every cream. time. Yes, correct. The reason mm. why we don't use... Steroids are very good medication. The, mm. the, the reason why we actually don't really use continuously, sometimes it'll mm. go maybe a week. Uh, if it's flat, if it's really toning down, then we we'll normally stop. We we'll continue with moisturizers. But in some conditions, we we, we do need uh, prolonged use of steroids. But those are very rare. Okay. Mm. So why do you don't really use in a prolonged manner of uh, all these steroids? The reason is that because if you use for too long, it can actually cause thinning of the skin. The skin mm. will become very very thin. So you just I for see. example, you can see elderly patients. You can see. If compared to elderly patient and us, right, you can see the skin is very thin. So that's how yes, the skin yes. is going to become if you use oh, uh, too much of too steroids. Too much of mm, yes. steroids. I see. Good mm. to know, Dr. So Chauvin. Thank you for yeah. the right information. Yeah, mm. that's why we, we use steroids, but in a very, uh, just during the acute phase, actually. Okay. Mm. And then the, the mm. third thing which I like to mention is that you need to give the patient antihistamines. Antihistamines mm. is antihistamines. basically... Okay. To reduce itch because you don't want you have already given steroids you've already given moisturizer but if the patient is still itching terribly he's end up going to just crash all the way through if he scratches 
it's going to make it worse. The eczema is going to flare up. And the worst thing is that you can actually introduce secondary bacterial infection. And that complicates matters. So in that scenario, yeah. what you need to do is that you have to add antibiotics, which is mm. not really necessary if you're really taken care of in the first place itself. So you need to take all mm. antibiotics and then you need to add more topical cream antibiotics. So you add up more and more things actually. So that's the problem. Okay. Okay. So got it. Mm, got it. And and then, so put it in the same place. Mm. At mm. home, right? Try to avoid uh, what do you call this? Uh, uh, using like a, uh, woolen nylon fabrics uh, or wear cotton fabrics. Uh, wear cotton fabrics. Oh, okay. so they actually reduce okay. the irritation to the skin. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, in, as I mentioned earlier, right, in severe eczema, sometimes you need uh, really some antibiotics and so on to actually treat them. Mm. In worst case yeah. scenarios, very bad. You're already given steroids, you're already given creams, you're given moisturizers, you give antihistamines, you're already taken carefully. If it's not working, so what do we do? Mm. In that scenario, you have to see a dermatologist. Mm. So dermatologist has other options. Sometimes they can actually give injections. Injections, mm. even sometimes like a, what do you call this, like a, to stop all this kind of flares up in the body to stop the eczema completely. But those kind of high-end medications only the dermatologist can prescribe and actually treat because they actually read a lot of expertise doing that, that thing actually. So on I our see. part, what we can do for eczema, simple, keep moisturized, use steroids when necessary, use antihistamines mm. when the itch is there and always keep skin clean and try not to scratch. And if you're unsure, please go and see the doctor immediately to get a proper diagnosis. Okay. okay, so this is a it. short okay. brief on eczema actually. And just I mentioned earlier, eczema itself right, is actually con interconnected with uh, asthma. A lot of patients mm -hmm. having uh, bronchial asthma or even allergic mm -hmm. rhinitis. Allergic rhinitis is basically you have like congestion over the nose, also tend to have eczema themselves because all these things are actually interrelated. Uh, they have the same mm -hmm. mechanism of uh, mm -hmm. things where they actually happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, Dr. Okay. Shoban, uh, thank you for sharing yeah, the, the details thing about and explain everything um, uh, in, uh, for eczema. So everybody uh, just uh, bear in mind, uh, there's something you can do for your kids, but there are also something you cannot predict and do for your kids. So bear in mind on that. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dr. Shoban. Always, Dr. Shoban, always, get, mm. always get the expert opinion on this. Just to make sure you don't, if you if you to try to treat, if you cannot treat, it's not improving, please see a doctor immediately. Because eczema sometimes can cause a lot of complications. So you, the worst thing is sometimes the scarring. You don't want any scarring to happen mm. over the face. You know, for kids, mm. so as they get older, you want all the scars in the face and the body and everything to actually, they, it'll affect the psychology actually. They'll feel down. Why do I look like this? You know, so you have to stop it yes, in the yes. root itself. Mm. Mm, got it. Thank you, Dr. Shoban, for sharing this. Uh, Dr. Shoban, other than eczema, what, are, what else are the common skin problems uh, could happen to children? Mm. Okay. So, uh, so the next thing is that uh, I would just like to touch uh, briefly on a few more topics. The other one will be uh, diaper rash or diaper dermatitis or nappy rash. I think this is very mm. common for uh, uh, new mothers or uh, parents. Yeah. I mean, having baby. So suddenly so you notice that after. Mm. After opening the, what do you call this, the pampers Diaper, or right. diapers, mm. ah, you can see diapers, the redness, okay. you know, over the... Okay, so that's diaper. the reason they call it as diaper rash. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because the, the, that's okay. the reason why they call it diaper rash. You see that off a lot in, in primary care, in clinics and so on. Parents get worried. Can I can you show me the text picture, if you don't mind? Yeah, sure. Uh, so back in yeah. Amit, we need to help on this. Okay, okay. I think I got picture. it when I was a kid. Okay. This is mm. actually one of the diaper uh, dermatitis uh, mm. or on the, the groin region for baby. You can see the redness, how erythematous and so on it is. And then uh, it's, it, the, the, what do you call it? You can see it's very, very red and it's very itchy for the child. Okay, yes, the next yes. picture. It can be. Okay, the next picture. Back okay. Mm. okay, just bear in mind. You can see, can you see the white, red, red spots coming up everywhere? Yes, on the yes, skin? I can okay. see that. Mm. Yes. Mm. The thing is that sometimes when you have this diaper rash and so on, right, the tendency is that you will have some candida or yeast infection as well. That means uh, this is not only due to uh, rash caused by the diaper, but 
because of the rash which is, which is already happening secondary infections in this scenario will be the fungus candida and yeast is actually a fungal growth it just mm-hmm. grows at the groin region you can see the red red spots coming up yes yes i saw so that. these are all the satellite lesions they will start forming lah okay so mm-hmm. what is actually a diaper rash okay can uh, can go back to the normal screen okay it actually is actually a, a skin rash which is covered by the baby's diaper it is commonly seen uh, for babies normally within the age of uh, 9 to 12 months it's very common mm-hmm. in that that age group but some some babies are even at birth after about few weeks you also you can see the rash coming up in the groin region it's normally caused by the is is the what is diaper rash actually basically it's actually a contact dermatitis is what mm-hmm. happens is that you know that region is you have a lot of urine and feces so what happens this urine and feces right actually irritates the skin at the groin region and oh. that actually causes the redness mm. so the child i mean the child passes urine and then we keep the diaper for so long we try to jima 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 okay we keep don't you don't throw oh, we make it full that's the reason mm. yeah so end up what happens when you open up okay now i receive one diaper uh one diaper already because we can keep it as much as i can but the irony yeah. is that what happens mm. you cause these issues to pop up diaper rash yes, and so on yes. okay it's not only that if it just stops at the rash is okay but if it ends up having secondary infections like yeast it gets worse and then you end up having to use even more medications to overcome this just because you want to save on diaper actually yes and then you spend the money on the medications <laughs> exactly <laughs> so do not <laughs> say that guys nice. yes. Mm. yes so the trick is that to stop this kind of diaper rash right is only thing, the thing is that you try to change it more frequently even though you mm. feel like okay after about couple of uh, hours 2 3 hours or 4 hours you feel okay it's almost done you just change the diaper and then you know the baby is actually past motion had done a big business okay change it immediately don't keep it there okay let's wait until he goes another half an hour or what then only we clean it up because mm. end of the day the more it touches the skin the more irritation is going to cause got it okay mm. so is that clear on that part on diaper rash Yes, and then yes, uh, what it, mm. Mm. and then the thing is that the, the how, how do you actually how do you try to overcome the uh, diaper rash as i mentioned earlier you try to change diaper more frequently uh, mm. don't keep it too long so keep it all the time more uh, keep it there but then when it's full when it's time to change you you change it uh, asap as as far as possible and then if you're unsure the rash is getting more is getting worse you please bring the baby to the doctor because sometimes as i mentioned earlier you might need antibiotic creams or even antifungal creams to treat them and some doctors they do actually prescribe uh, anti inflammatory medications as well mm-hmm. and um you call it a moisture resistant uh, what do you call this diaper barrier creams like zinc oxide so these are actually mm-hmm. very important to make sure that it it heals better for the child and always 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 keep the baby's groin area bum area clean and dry and change okay. very very frequently. frequently and then keep it even though you're wearing diaper like, on and off you keep it open actually so that it clears out whatever mm. excessive mm. water which has actually, actually accumulated on the mm. groin region okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. that's quite straightforward okay. actually mm. i see i see okay good to know dr shobin so uh Now we have another audience. Uh, that, uh, uh, so another audience is asking, uh, can ben, uh, benzoyl peroxide can be used in prolonged period mm, in benzoyl this situation? Peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide, peroxide, is peroxide is suitable? Yes, for, benzoyl peroxide. Uh, benzoyl peroxide for both of them. For, uh, nappy for rash. diaper rash? Yeah, diaper rash or maybe eczema? No, right? Uh, Benzoyl peroxide is normally mm. used for uh, acne, 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 acne right. problems. Yeah, I uh, used that before. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so, so normally, it's not suitable uh, for the for the babies. Yeah, yeah. It, it don't really use for what do you call this uh, acne problems and so on. The thing is yes. that try to keep it moisturized all the time, and then if there's any infections and so on, you try not to. uh what do you call this uh just keep it moisturized lah but you don't use yes. actually uh benzoyl peroxide and so on mm, yes yes mm, okay i think they confused with that. the zinc oxide the thing you use zinc yes, oxide yes maybe yeah maybe they use <laughs> zinc oxide zinc oxide can keep the skin moisturized right yes 
Correct. Mm. Zinc oxide is the one you normally use for uh, what's this for nappy rash, uh, not benzoyl mm. peroxide. They sound very similar, right. but yeah. you use zinc. Yeah, it sounds similar, but it's different. Yeah. So everybody bear yeah. in mind. Okay, do yes. not get the wrong medicine for your kids. Yeah. Okay. Good to know, Dr. Chopin. Dr. Mm. Chopin. Other than these two, uh, what else? It, what else? It can be a common one for for the kids. Mm. Okay. The other one I would like to always touch is upon is actually hives. I don't know whether you heard about hives. It's actually uh, the medical name for it is urticaria. Gaga in Malay you call it gagata. It's actually you can mm. see like uh, it's very itchy, uh, red lesions which pops up on the body. You can just feel mm. it's like uh, elevated lesions, very bumpy on the skin and so on. So it's mm. quite sometimes it can be very generalized, you know, over the body everywhere and so on. So uh, mm. what you normally do is then these are actually very itchy, very they can cause a lot of swelling and so mm. on. Uh, what are the causes of this urticaria? Can I see the picture? I mean, the next yeah, picture. Yeah, uh, and Amit, we need your help on this. Thank you so much. Yeah. So to show the pre picture. Okay. Oh, can you so see this? this is the one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You can see the actually you can see the red lesions popping up everywhere. You know, over the neck, over the hands, over the arms. It's actually it's like red lesions which elevation is elevated. So this is for mm. baby, but this condition, right, can actually uh, uh, happen to anybody, even for adults, even for elderly patients as well. But for children, it's very, very common uh, having this. So this is known as urticaria. And why? What triggers this lesion in children is that is most of the time is caused by uh, viral post-viral infection, like common cold uh, and and those kind of things. Sometimes even certain food or certain uh, what do you call these foods like. Uh, eggs, nuts, milk, uh, soy sauce, uh, certain medications like non-sterile anti-inflammatory medicine like painkillers or these are the ones can actually trigger the uh, urticaria. Sometimes there's no reason whatsoever. Mm. It just flares up for no reason. Also, we have that, mm. that kind of conditions. Okay? Can go back okay. to normal screen. Mm -hmm. mm. So what you normally do for this kind of conditions when you have hives, Basically, um, when you have hives, right, you need antihistamines. You need to give mm. the, the patient, uh, what you call this, to reduce the itchiness. So, antihistamine is actually prescribed for the baby. And um, mm. bear in mind, hives can be life-threatening. So, if mm. you see these lesions coming up and you notice the baby is having any, or baby or children, having any kind of difficulty in breathing, because hive is actually a type of allergy reaction to certain infections and so on. So most of the time, it actually gets better on its own uh, with the creams and so on, or with the antihistamines, it mm. gets better. But in certain conditions, it can go up to the level of the child can have actually difficulty in breathing. So if you mm. have this rash popping up, please, please bring to the doctor for assessment. Because normally he'll mm. give antihistamine. He normally needs to check the lungs and everything to make sure everything is okay. If it's very clear on that, the oxygen levels are all normal, normally they just treat symptomatically by giving antihistamines. And once you give the antihistamines, it will eventually get better. Got so it. that's urticaria. Mm. Okay. okay. I mean, so all the changes, they look the same, yeah. you know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Looks yeah. like common, but uh, different cases and different situations, yeah. right? Yes, correct. So, Dr. Chopin, what can parents actually do for, for this? Uh, only, uh, like, just now we have a diaper rash, we have to change diaper frequently. What about this one? Mm. Okay. Do they have to do hives anything? Are, hives are too bad, we can't do anything about it much. Because the mm. moment you get it, right, you can you can only mm. treat uh, during that time. Suddenly, oh, my child is having hives now. Rashes are popping up everywhere. So, the only thing is that you have to bring to a doctor or if you have any antihistamines you can give first to bring it down okay, there's no way okay. that you can actually uh, prevent it it just happens I because see. the reaction okay. to it but mm. the thing is that there are certain conditions where you have uh, uh, you need you might need some blood tests to determine there's any kind of any blood disorders actually causing this urticaria mm. so that's a, okay. those are very very rare conditions well, as I mentioned earlier, it's more to due to viral infections, some allergens, some medications which triggers the hives. But there are also certain conditions where it can actually become like chronic urticaria, where the patient has a disease associated with urticaria, where you need to do some blood tests and so on to determine whether it's how to treat the patient and so on. So that you need to bring to a doctor. So whenever you see hives, 
please bring to a doctor immediately, at least for first assessment. Yes. Okay. Got it. Mm. Okay. So everybody, uh, this is very important. So if something happened uh, to you or uh, to your kids, okay, please, okay, bring to the clinic immediately. Do not think much. If you have antihistamine, yeah, apply it first. So Dr. Chauvin, yeah, good to know about this. So right here, uh, uh, I some people, yeah, they are asking about these questions. Okay, so Celosia, she's asking about, uh, people say, do not buff your, do not take shower for your kids. Yeah, do not let the kids take shower if you are having the articaria. Yeah, is, is, this, is this correct? Mm. Uh, there's no real scientific backing for that, actually. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, why... If to say that don't bathe your child having a tick area, uh, what are we trying to achieve? Is if there's any kind of irritant to the skin which is causing that, uh, it's okay. So you don't bathe or what. But in actual mm -hmm. sense, right, there's no real medical benefit to actually not to bathe the child. I think it's better if you bathe the child to keep the skin clean and so on. Clean, so right. I think there's mm -hmm. no, no harm at all. You can actually bathe mm -hmm. the child. But if you're worried, just wipe the child, clean up the body and so on. If you're worried, lah. But actually, medical point of view, right, which I've known of practicing, I've never really come across any literature on this stating that I it's see. actually uh, contraindicated or not advisable to bid. You can go okay. on with it. Okay, mm. got it, got it. So maybe um, they, they are worried about, uh, like, it's, as you mentioned, right, uh, they have to send to clinic immediately. So ask them to not take shower to waste the time. Maybe that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. but if you have the hives, right, please go straight to the clinic. La, because yes, you never go know, straight you know. to the clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen cases where they had hives and then they tried to self-treat. And then by the time they came to the clinic, the, the, the child is already having difficulty in breathing. Those are actually mm -hmm. rare conditions. Because in that scenario, right, you really need to do a lot of things. You need to give the IV steroids. You need to give uh, monitor the oxygen levels. And then you need to transfer to hospital. So you do not want... I mean... It won't happen, but you do not want that thing for no reason happen to your own child, actually. Because if you had taken an early action, right, would have, I mean, avoided the thing completely. Got it. Thank you, Dr. Chopin. So everybody, yeah, I believe you, are, you have a clear picture on these three um, uh, diseases. Okay, so everybody, if you like, like our life today, you think this is so meaningful and also beneficial to everybody, please share it out right now. We, we still have uh, 20, 22 minutes to go. Yeah, so everybody share it out so the, your, your friends and your families or your relatives, they can know more about this topic. This is so useful if they have children or kids. Yeah, if they are planning to have children in future, this is useful for, for them. Yeah, share it out, everybody, and like the page like our set live sessions so right here everybody we are going to another another two more right on the shop and another yeah, two more just to go. two common ones now mm. the fast one actually <laughs> okay good yeah. okay so dr shop what what is the yeah. number four mm. okay the fourth one we normally see in children in in normal common practice is them is actually um, a thing known as uh, contact dermatitis uh is actually uh, a lesion uh the next one Okay, can you see these two pictures? These are actually uh, caused by irritant contact dermatitis. Okay, for the left picture, you can see around the mouth. Can you see it's already very scaly, very red. It's like cracking up and everything. That is actually caused by, caused by when the child actually leaks around the mouth with the saliva. The saliva actually triggers the allergy reaction around the mouth region. That's one of it. Mm. And the other picture on the right side, you can see, is actually caused by the watch, nickel watch, which actually irritates oh. the skin. Mm. Okay. So there's okay. so many different types of uh, contact dermatitis. One can be irritant, the other can be allergy. Irritant can maybe due to the saliva, some chemicals, uh, plant sap, those kind of things. Whereas uh, allergy can be due to these kind of things like uh, what I call this, uh, uh, some... Uh, like uh, like nickel or any kind of like chemicals which are actually touching the skin and so on. So uh, what actually triggers them, these things actually is actually a few things. La. As I mentioned, a diaper rash is also one of the causes or one of the subsets of actually this condition. Urine and feces. Sliver causes this as well over the around the mm. mouth. Mm. Soap and certain baby lotions also can cause this kind of lesions pop up. Certain foods, oh. 
and I mentioned earlier the plants, the plant sap, the the the, the milk, right? That actually can cause this kind of uh, allergy reactions. Metals like uh, nickel, chrome, uh, mercury, but mm-hmm. mercury is very poisonous. It's very very dangerous. And then the other one is latex, it's like rubber toys and so on. That can actually irritate the skin and cause these kind of lesions to come up. So what happens is that uh, how do they normally present? The lesion becomes very, very red and very, very erythematous at the point where it touches the skin. So for this child on the left side is around the mouth and mm-hmm. for this mm-hmm. side on the right side is for the uh, child on the arm where the wash touches the skin. So this is how normally they will present. So what uh, what you normally do to what you call this to stop this kind of uh, reactions to the skin? So the the simplest and for example, uh, I forgot to mention this condition right can cause blistering. It can really cause like lesions like very pustular. It can cause a lot of pus formation, and that can cause secondary infections and they cause the skin to very thicken. You can see the left side of the picture right the, around the mouth. It, the, the skin mm. becomes very very thick and coarse and looks very very uh, deformed actually the skin. Yes, okay. yes. And again and again, mm. if you see this condition, please bring to a doctor again. Because normally, mm. uh, in these conditions, right, the only way to stop this is that it too, is to actually remove the irritant. If you remove the irritant, it will normally disappear. For example, mm. for adult patients, right, those who like work in cement factories or those who are working in construction sites, even they can develop because of cement. And you can see their hands are very dry, very coarse cracking, those kind of things. Mm. So the only way to stop this kind of lesions popping up is actually to remove the irritant. Okay? I see. Okay, mm. good to you know. You have to avoid the contact. Lah. So don't wear the watch anymore. If you see the things becoming red, don't wear the watch. You're wearing the glove. The gloves makes like a kind of like red rash over the hands. You take off the glove, don't use anymore. And if you have, you're washing some plates and so on, you notice that the things are popping up over the hands, then you don't use that kind of soap. So you avoid the the, the 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 irritant actually which actually causes the mm. skin lesion but again so again one, mm, if mm. you're unsure please go to a mm. clinic or any dermatologist yes. to double check on this yes I understand mm. okay so this can happen like uh suddenly um and it it could be like you want to take the actions what you have to do is same as the the one just now you mentioned go to the clinic Right. Yes, correct. And then remove the irritant. That means if you, if you notice mm. that that watch itself is causing that, that, that rash to pop up, or you know that glove you're using is causing that irritant to irritant come up, so you take off the irritation, irritant actually, the causative agent, so that the thing will won't get worse and so on. You I don't see. need to use any kind of creams or what for that. You just mm. take off the uh, irritant actually. Mm. It's just more like an allergy to certain things for the skin. Like. Certain things. Okay, will yes. they actually uh, continue to have this kind of situation when they grow up, or just like when they were a kid, they would happen like this? What about uh, when the, they grow up? Mm. The tendency is that actually, when you when you're young, you already you're exposed to these things, and you're already having an allergy to certain uh, pro, certain uh, metals or mm. certain uh, products and so on. Right? You will mm. actually carry on for your own whole life, actually. That means oh, for life, okay. right, certain things you won't be able to touch. So you know that if you wear this, you will have, have this skin condition. So you for your whole life, right, you really have to avoid it. There's no just choice like, actually. Just like our skin energy, is already right. like that. Correct. Mm, we are genetically understand. prone to that. Yes. I see. Okay, good to know, Dr. Chopin. Dr. Chopin, now I think we can just uh, proceed to the last one. Last one. Uh, last one is a very one. straightforward one. <laughs> Normally, this is the one I see a lot in, in my practice. Is actually uh, mm-hmm. what you call heat rash. Heat uh, rash, okay. Yeah, this is the one in a child. You see like bumps coming up and so on. It actually uh, is called as prickly heat. La. But in medical point of view, a medical wording is known as uh, miliara rubra. That's the word for this actually. But in actual mm-hmm. layman's term, it's actually heat rash. Okay, you can see the mm-hmm. thing is pops up very, very like this discreet, uh, what do you call this, uh, bumps coming up over the skin. Very, very red, and you can see, and it's very itchy. Uh, the reason why this happens is that it's actually, you know, in our country, right, it's very humid. We, our country mm. is very, very Yes, humid. it is. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So what happens when you have this heat, uh, heat, very hot weather and so on, right? The, the sweating actually blocks the sweat glands. So when the sweat glands are actually blocked, this uh, heat rash pops up very easily. 
So mm. the only way to actually stop this, uh, what I call this, to stop the heat trash, uh, is that only way is to cool the child down. That means you try not to mm. avoid, try to avoid avoiding going to hot places, bringing back to mm. indoors, and then uh, remove excessive clothing. Don't wear very thick clothing, uh, like uh, we are going out somewhere. Don't wear too much of thick clothing in the in the clothes. I mean, in for ourselves mm. because that can cause excessive sweating and the heat trash will pop up even more for the child. And then uh, what you can do is then um, for these kind of conditions, right? You don't really need to treat anything as long as you can bring the child to a more cooler place. You can make sure the sweat gland it's not too wet, mm. the body's not too wet. You clear up the skin, keep it dry. Eventually, the heat trash will actually disappear on its own. You do not need to put any medication or any topical creams or oh, any oral okay. medications for this. Mm. It's self-limiting as long as you bring the child back inside, keep the child cool, towel down a bit, make them cooler a bit, the thing will disappear. Okay. I see. Okay. Mm. So, okay. so these are the five things I would like to share and which I normally see in my own practice. In my own clinical practice for this all these okay. years and so on. These are most prominent ones. I mean, there are more than this actually. There's so many other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, there are more than this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so many things. If you want to go on, you can go on and on and on for hours. It will not stop actually. But this okay, are we will put that at, as in the next section. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so Dr. Shobin, right, uh, I'm curious about one thing. Uh, since you mentioned about the heat rash, you just put them into the place while where mm. it is not hot. What about like you help them to take a cold shower? Will that actually help? Uh, actually, it does. Because as long as you can actually uh, cool them down, right, you, the tendency is that you won't uh, sweat a lot. So when you don't sweat a lot, the clogging of the sweat gland will be much lesser. But what I feel is that no need to actually, uh, I mean, bathe them completely, just wipe them out nicely. Put, put them in a very uh, cool place is more than enough already actually because I sometimes see. when you try to bathe uh, with sweating and so on okay everybody hold on for just a so, second uh, sorry for that the phone just rang that's sorry okay, for that's that okay no yeah. worries no so worries. the thing is that you just towel the what do you call this the patient down and just keep them in the uh, cool weather is more than enough but other than that okay. i think it shouldn't be any issue mm. I see. So this is a simple way to settle it. Very simple, actually. Yeah. They'll come to the clinic. We're worried, you know, doctor, I'm having this kind of bumps and every over the skin. What can I do? Normally, what we do, we don't need to do anything. You just keep them cool. Just give some few hours. The thing will just disappear on its own. No need any medication. Mm. Ask, doctor, no need any medication. Right? No, need, no need, actually. Do you need any steroids? I said, no steroids. No need to uh, use any steroids whatsoever. They will normally disappear. I see. So just bring to the cold place. Uh, so Dr. Shoban, Celos mm. is, uh, is asking, uh, how mm. long will it actually disappear uh, on its own? Mm. Which one? Around the heat like rash how many hours? hours? The heat rash, that's right. Mm. Uh, actually, if you look at it, right, if you just uh, you bring insight back into the... Uh, I mean, let's say you're not exposed much already to the heat and so on, right? Sometimes uh, within the same day, maybe within about eight hours, it takes a bit oh, longer. Eight hours. So after that, okay. it just disappears. Sometimes what I like to do is I'll try to just uh, give some moisturizers for the skin and everything. But those are actually more like uh, just uh, symptomatic kind of thing when I see dry skin. But mm-hmm. otherwise, mm-hmm. probably they will actually disappear. Just give about okay. sometimes even after a couple of hours, you know, two hours, three hours, it's just gone. But I think the, the mean timing takes about six to eight hours around that. Six to eight hours. Okay. So it's, mm. it still depends on individual, right? Everybody is different. Yes, exactly. Mm. Mm. Okay. So the Dr. Chopin, we got... Dr. Um, Chopin? Yeah. Uh, we got another one about... So Emma, Emma um, uh, is, is talking about this. Yeah. Uh, she is asking about... Uh, my 12 years old son frequently having the uh, alticaria, especially during the night time uh, since last two years. No matter no matter where we've been uh, like helping him, uh, still happening to him. Uh, so normally doctor right just gave her uh, gave her child the calamine, calamine lotions and sometimes give him the periton. So what do you think about this? Hmm. Okay, normally they do give calamine. Calamine is actually, it cools down the body actually. Even for chicken pox, you use calamine. It just reduces the itch. Mm. Piton is basically an antihistamine. So you use that for itchiness. But if, as I mentioned earlier, if the urticaria is very frequent, you know, it's like very, very frequent. It's like non-stop. It keeps on repeating back and again everything. 
normally the doctor will usually refer to a dermatologist because you need to do a blood workup. You need to do a blood workup and certain parts of the blood you need to check whether there's any kind of abnormality or not. Most of the time, there's nothing there. But there are certain conditions known as chronic urticaria. In mm -hmm. chronic urticaria, right, is actually some kind of disorder in the blood which causes the uh, urticaria to persist. So in that scenario, right, normally you need to see a dermatologist and see whether you need to put on long-term antihistamines or not. So that's actually Understood. warranted. Mm. So it's, it's good. If it's persistently there, right, it's always good to actually uh, see a dermatologist. At least do a simple blood test. And okay, so, so don't look for the uh, don't go to the normal clinic. Yeah, if it happens like more more than yes, once, yes, correct. Uh, goes to the dermatologist. Okay. Yes, correct. It's Got better it. to get it uh, checked and so on. What about uh actually right? Uh, since I was a child, I always heard some elderly say, if you have the some skin issues like no matter it's like eczema or heat rash, do not eat. Is. then one of the audience is <laughs> asking about this do you actually <laughs> actually agree with this uh x you don't really uh uh Relate, say right? any yeah uh, it's not real any contraindication for x la for mm. urticaria unless you're allergic to egg yolks or anything like that but it's never really a, a problem actually to consume eggs for patients who are having urticaria or an allergy for this kind of condition. No problem at all. No issue. Yes. So far, Unless you are... Don't have to, hmm. Yeah. It's, it's no problem at all. You can just proceed with I it see. because eggs are actually a good source of protein and so on. So yes, you want yes, to say that because so. that you don't want to take it. Yeah, I think it's quite difficult. You can actually yes, proceed I with it. So. I mean, yes. Yes. Okay. So everybody, is, uh, this is not like... Uh, a, a really uh, scientific proven things so everybody you don't have to worry about this uh, i believe like uh, all the asian families no matter you are indian chinese or malay you always heard of this but yeah today we have a daughter shopping here uh share this with you this is not a scientific proven things so you don't really have to worry about this yeah unless that you all have like the, mm, allergy right it's it allergy Mm. Yeah, sometimes all the things actually uh, traditionally, mm. I'm not saying anything in traditional things or what, but it's all mm -hmm. brought by our, I mean, our elderly elder, elders and everything tell you yes, cannot eat yes. this, cannot eat that. There, there are a lot of truth in that, I agree, but certain things I think we can actually debunk. I mean, say that, okay, this I think we can't really accept it. I think this mm -hmm. we can just go on to think um, food and so on, no issue whatsoever. So for this scenario, right, definitely I think shouldn't be any problem. La. I see. Okay. So right here, uh, we have uh, so every yeah everyone. So right here, if you have uh some 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 more questions, maybe like just a few questions, yeah, because we are going to end the end this live soon. So everybody, if you have any questions, you can just put it down and remember to share the live out. So later on, if you just maybe you just enter this live, yeah, later on you can play it back. Yeah, don't worry about that. So if you like today's live, please place a follow loves and also likes to our daughter Shoburn, Dr. Shoburn. So Dr. Shoburn, uh, right here, I saw another question um, to know if it is chronic uh, articaria, it is recurrent for how many times, like how many times could happen and you can know it could be the permanent one. Mm. A chronic one. Normally, if you have a chronic urticaria, right, it normally goes mm. a, more than uh, one month, about six uh, six weeks and so on. That means that the see. urticaria just go, you try to, uh, mm. the, the urticaria doesn't disappear. It just goes on and mm. on and on for one and a half months. So, if you have chronic urticaria, right, uh, you have urticaria more than six weeks, it's already, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, classified as uh, chronic urticaria so mm. uh, that's how it goes i mean in clinical wise duration more than six mm. weeks is already chronic urticaria so this is totally different from the one earlier this is something to do with blood issues and so on where you have hyper uh, reaction to a lot of things you have high level of eosinophilia and so on so these are the things you normally need to check in the blood because those are the things that actually cause chronic, chronic urticaria but by mm. definition it's more than six weeks I see. It's not recurrent, okay. it's continuous for six weeks actually. Oh, okay. Got it. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Shoban. Yeah. Mm. Good to know. Okay. Thank you for the information. 
Yeah, so I, I think Dr. Shelburne, yeah, here comes to the end of, of our life. So right here, everybody, Dr. Shelburne is uh, having, okay, uh, he's from Premier Medical Clinic in Iskandar Putri, Johor Bahru. So if you want, if you have any questions and you think this doctor is so nice and also for myself, I think this doctor is friendly, patient, and also he always uh, give us some warm message yeah, to remind us what to do. Yeah, if you like his, Mm, this kind of consultation and also this kind of explanation you can uh, give hands a visit yeah, in Iskandar Putri so his clinic name is Premier Medical Clinic so uh, back end I need your help to put uh, his clinic name uh, in in the chat so everybody can know it so Dr. Shoban do you have any like uh, a short summary yeah, to conclude <laughs> about this life today mm. okay uh, don't ever take skin conditions lightly because mm. even if you notice any rashes coming up uh, in any part of the skin uh, it can be uh, most of the time it's very simple disease and so on but sometimes it can be even life-threatening so for example infected eczema that's quite straightforward and everything certain other conditions where you have skin skin manifestation which is not common is like dengue fever even can mm. cause skin uh, manifestation as well so those kind of things you do not want to miss. So if you're not sure, please always see a doctor, your closest doctor you're, you're, you're comfortable with, any family doctor you're comfortable with, please check all the time. And make sure, keep the skin always moisturized. And if you are mm. unsure, please call up your doctor and ask immediately. Okay? Yes. Okay. That is a good advice. I love that. Mm. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Shelburne. Okay, uh, so right here, I just uh, put it in a simple way to tell the audience. So if you have eczema, keep it moisturized. If you have diaper rash, keep changing the diapers yeah, frequently. And the third one and the fourth one, urticaria and also contact um, dermatitis. dermatitis. If you have this, go, yeah, dermatitis, you go to a clinic immediately. Do not think that much. And if you have a heat rash, move the kids to the colder area. That's right, right? So if you want to know more about the information we discussed about just now, if you missed that, okay, after this live, you can still play it back, everybody. So here comes to the end of the live today. So everybody, we let us give a give give the many likes and also love to Dr. Shelburne. Okay, we're gonna say goodbye to him. Thank you so much, Dr. Shelburne, Thank for you. having you today. Yeah. I will see Thank you, you so time. much. Thank Thanks, so time. Much. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. -bye. Good night. So everybody, right here, I have two things, okay, want to encourage you to join. The first one will be our calorie, uh, the, the drawing and also the coloring contest. So back end, I need your help to put the post yeah, on the, yeah, on the live here. So right here, everybody, if you realize we have a competition uh, for the kids, uh, they can join it if they are 6 to 12 years old. So they can draw whatever they want on the paper and remember to color it after done the paper, you can upload it to our, hmm, our, our Dell and Sister page, okay? Mm -hmm. And our admin will help you to actually participate this. And if you win the prize, okay? If you win the prize, you can actually what get what? If you are a champion, if your kid is a champion, he or she will get the tickets, okay? Not just you. Okay, and also the parents can go to Legoland or either Sunweb Lagoon. Okay, it's either one, just like you can make a choice if you win the champion. And also, if you win the second or the third prize, you will be also getting the Lego set. So what an amazing thing, right? Okay, we have to we have something uh, for you. Okay, it's an incredible and uh, such a yeah, rare, rare thing, okay, happen in this platform. Yeah, because we only have it like once a year. So don't miss the chance, everybody. And another one, okay, we will have our, our, okay. So back end, I need your help to show the slide. Yeah, so another one, we will have another live sessions with Stella International School. We will be discussing about uh, three secrets on selecting the best school for your child. So this is the second thing, okay? You guys can join it. So it will be on uh, next week, next Thursday. 
uh, 8th, September, 8.30 p.m. And another one last thing is about upcoming uh, upcoming weekend. We have an activity charity bazaar. Okay, the venue is is in Pendubuan uh, Gabachikan Chain in Johor Bahru. Okay, the date is on 3rd September this month. Okay, which is this month, uh, coming Saturday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, we have the Mid Autumn Charity Bazaar, so you can actually buy the things. Okay, and can can actually yeah, help the society to be better because th this is considered as a charity. So it's a good thing, right? So why not you give a visit to that? So everybody here comes to the end of the live. I'm really happy to see you guys today and I hope to see you next week in our upcoming live. So my name is Jeffrey. Hope you enjoyed the live today. So everybody, we shall say goodbye to you. Bye-bye everyone. Have a good night. Good night.